Well, hey guys, in today's video, I wanna talk all things chemical peels. In my opinion, chemical peels are a bit underrated. They are a cost-effective and safe treatment option for a variety of skin conditions and skin concerns, acne, acne scars, hyperpigmentation, fine lines, wrinkles, extensive sun damage, Chemical peels can even be beneficial for those of you who make a lot of those little pre-skin cancers known as actinic keratoses. Now, if you go online searching out information about chemical peels, you are gonna come across a lot of information, a lot of different ingredients, different names. It's pretty easy to quickly become overwhelmed. In this video, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna dial it down to the basics so that by the end of this video, you're gonna have a good understanding of what the different types of chemical peels can do what you might expect from a chemical peel and what the risks and benefits of different types of chemical peels are. What the heck is a chemical peel? A chemical peel is a process of applying a caustic uh, ingredient to the skin to precisely and rapidly destroy the skin cells to a desired depth of the skin, with the end result being an improvement in skin appearance and skin texture. Depending on the depth of penetration, the result of this targeted cellular destruction is you get new epidermal growth, improvement in collagen and elastin production in the deeper layers of the skin. You also can get a more even distribution of melanin pigment in the skin and an improvement in some of the structural components. You don't need to have extensive background in skin anatomy to follow along and understand this video. All you need to understand about skin anatomy is a very simple point. If you think about the skin, think about it in these two layers which are relevant to today's video. You have the top layer which is the epidermal and you have the bottom layer, which is the dermis. Chemical peels differ in how deep they go. How deep a chemical peel goes will depend on a few things, including the concentration, the pH, and the type of peeling ingredient utilized. Starting with superficial chemical peels. Superficial chemical peels will go to a depth that includes the epidermis, the top part of the skin, down to just where the epidermis meets the dermis. Ingredients that might be utilized in a superficial chemical peel include alpha hydroxy acids, like glycolic acid, lactic acid, malic acid, pyruvic acid. You also can have a superficial peel with salicylic acid. Yes, that's right. You know salicylic acid. It's commonly found in over-the-counter acne treatments, usually at 2% strength. It's also in over-the-counter uh, dandruff shampoos, usually at 3% strength. But when we're talking about salicylic acid for a superficial chemical peel, it's going to be applied to the skin generally anywhere between 10 to 30% strength. Don't try this at home. Lipohydroxy acid. Who knows what that is? LHA. I've talked about this in other videos. LHA is a modified form of salicylic acid. It too may be utilized as a superficial chemical peeling agent. Trichloroacetic acid, TCA. This is one of the most versatile peeling agents in my opinion. At less than 20% strength, TCA uh, may be applied to the skin for superficial peeling purposes. It's not uncommon to have a chemical peel that actually may include a few different ingredients. A classic example of this in the realm of superficial chemical peels is the Jessner peel. This was established back in the 1950s. It includes resorcinol, lactic acid, salicylic acid, and ethanol. Now superficial peels typically are going to be performed as serial procedures every four weeks. It's not a one and done with a superficial peel. It's in order to ultimately derive maximal benefits. But the nice thing about a superficial chemical peel is there's no downtime. You can have this done and you can go right back to work no problem. You just have to be a bit more patient. Medium depth peels are going to go down to the dermis. Once you get down into the dermis, here's another point you need to understand about skin anatomy as it relates to the dermis and chemical peels. There's the top part of the dermis called the papillary dermis, and then underneath that you have the reticular dermis. With a medium depth chemical peel, you are peeling down to the papillary dermis and the very top part of that reticular dermis. Try chlor acetic acid. Again, I told you it was a versatile peeling agent between 35 and 50% strength can get to a medium depth peel. Unlike a superficial chemical peel, a medium depth peel is usually performed as a single session. It's not the kind of thing you're gonna come back to every four weeks. But there's a bit of downtime. With a medium depth peel, you're gonna start having what's called desquamation or peeling. Usually in the next five days, takes roughly about a week of downtime to recover from a medium depth chemical peel. Moving on to the deep peels. A deep peel is gonna go deep as, as it, the name 
name would imply. It's gonna go down to the mid part of the reticular dermis. Examples of deep peels are a phenol peel, a Baker-Gordon peel, which is actually a mixture of phenol, croton oil, hexachlorophene soap, and distilled water. Deep peel is a single session. This is not something you're coming back for every four weeks, but the downtime, as you can imagine, is, is much, much greater here. Uh, hopefully at this point, you kind of have a sense that the deeper you go, the longer the downtime, the more potential for adverse effects. I mean, here, you're gonna have to completely re-epithelialize your skin, your skin, and that takes 10 to 14 days. The downtime is a lot longer. Usually you can return to work after about two to three weeks, but you can have persistent redness for several months after a deep chemical peel. Deep chemical peels are a lot more serious. There's a lot more potential for harm with the deep chemical peel. They should only ever be performed by a licensed professional. Uh, for example, you know, with phenol, the patient actually has to be monitored, have their heart, heart monitored, because it can cause adverse health effects. So hopefully at this point, you have some basic understanding that chemical peels essentially differ in the depth. I wouldn't worry too much about the individual ingredients. Uh, it's, it's really more about what is going to be right for you as a patient. And we'll get into some of those nuances, but what exactly could a superficial chemical peel offer you? Superficial chemical peels are most beneficial for people who have mild acne or mild acne scarring, for people who have some uh, hyperpigmentation that's mild, mild sun damage. The nice thing about a superficial chemical peel is that not only is it something that has no downtime, but it's safe for all skin types. When we talk about skin types, we're talking about Fitzpatrick phototypes, how your skin responds to light. Deeper skin tones are more at risk for post-peel hyperpigmentation if the peel is too intense, but a superficial chemical peel is safe for all skin types. In fact, superficial chemical peels can be very, very valuable for improving hyperpigmentation in deeper skin tones and just evening out the distribution of that melanin pigment in the skin to improve hyperpigmentation. What about medium peels? Who, what, is, what is appropriate for a medium depth peel? Somebody who has more extensive sun damage, someone who makes a lot of actinic keratoses might benefit from a medium depth peel. Remember, with a medium depth peel, we're now getting into the dermis. So there is a, is a location where you're wanting that effect of collagen and elastin improvement. So this is gonna be a potential option for somebody who has fine lines, moderate wrinkles. In the case of acne scars, moderate depth chemical peels can actually be really beneficial for uh, depressed acne scars that aren't too deep. As a side note, I have a video, speaking of acne scars, that you definitely need to check out if you are interested in, in chemical peels as a treatment for acne scars. I have a video going into detail about the TCA cross. It's a way to use TCA, again, a very versatile peeling agent, to treat uh, like boxcar scars, just the scar itself, not a full-blown facial peel. Check that video out, I'm gonna link it down below. But uh, medium depth peels can get results for people who have some very shallow depressed acne scars. Might also be beneficial for those of you who have pockmark scars, maybe from a scarring viral infection that you had, maybe you developed chicken pox scars, a peel might be beneficial in that case because again, we're getting down to the dermis, stimulating potentially collagen improvement. Who here has seborrheic keratoses? I have videos all about these. They're brown, raised, or flat, stuck on bumps. And they're not harmful or dangerous, but people want them removed for cosmetic reasons. And some people make a lot of seborrheic keratoses. A medium depth peel, you might find to be beneficial removing those. Likewise, a lot of you guys ask me, what's a good peel for someone who has a lot of sunspots? Again, depending on your background, medical history, your skin type, and all of those factors, a medium depth peel might actually be a, a good option. You can really get some nice uh, improvement in the 
appearance of what are called solar lentigos, aka age spots, sunspots. But a deep peel is, is something, you know, you're, you're getting down in that dermis. So it's something that's gonna be maybe an appropriate choice for somebody who has a lot of extensive sun damage, very deep, coarse wrinkles. People who make a lot of skin cancers might benefit from a deep peel, provided that they are an appropriate candidate for it. And deep peels, because of where they're going, down to the dermis, they can be beneficial for improving scars. Unlike a superficial peel, medium and deep peels Proceed with caution if you have Fitzpatrick phototype three through six. So medium to deep skin tones because your skin tone is more at risk for post peel hyperpigmentation. And these deeper peels are riskier in those groups. So those are some examples of what these different peels can target and improve. But when it comes to deciding if one of these is right for you, again, I can't predict that for you, but some things that go into it, what, what you're going to be asked and you know, what the conversation is going to start out with is not only getting a good medical history, but your doctor is going to examine you. They're gonna ask you things about, do you have any history of sensitivity to the sun? If that's the case, then some of these may not be right for you. If you have a history of herpes cold sores, that's important to bring up because there is a chance that one is gonna be brought out by these peels. Regardless, most derms will prescribe uh, something called acyclovir, an antiviral, to suppress that from happening. Do you have a history of making thickened, raised scars known as hypertrophic scars? Do you have a history of keloids? And are you someone whose skin heals with hyperpigmentation? And make sure you tell the doctor of any medications or dietary supplements that you're taking because some medications not only impair healing, but they also increase the risk of hyperpigmentation, including oral contraceptive pills and certain hormonal medications. Once you and your dermatologist have determined that appeal is right for you, which one, your skincare routine can, can really set you up for success potentially. First and foremost, in the weeks leading up to getting a chemical peel, try and not spend a lot of time in the sun. Make sure you're really, really, really diligent with your sun protection, sunscreen, sun protective clothing. I mean, I advocate doing that all the time, but be extra, extra good in the weeks leading up to getting a chemical peel because it will help suppress the urge of your skin cells to make too much pigment in response to the peel. So you'll have overall a lower risk of post peel hyperpigmentation and better healing overall. You know, UV rays and sun exposure, it actually suppresses skin healing. So make sure you're really being good about the sun protection. And guess what? After the peel, you're gonna have to be really good about sun protection. So go ahead and start doing that now. It's not the time to experiment with a lot of skincare products and make sure you have told your, your dermatologist, the provider, what skincare products that you are using. Are you using retinol? Are you already using some kind of hydroxy acid at home, like a salicylic acid face wash, something like that that they should know about because that's gonna influence the rate of penetration of these ingredients when you go in for the peel. They may ask you to stop that. It, it, it's not uncommon actually to go ahead and prescribe tretinoin to be used for the weeks leading up to a chemical peel because tretinoin, as, as you guys know, you know, it smooths out the skin surface. So that's gonna allow for for more efficient penetration of the peeling ingredients. On the flip side of that, they may not want you to do that. If you're somebody, especially who has a deeper skin tone and they're going for a superficial peel, while you using tretinoin in advance of that superficial peel, it might actually uh, lead to over penetration and get into the territory of uh, almost a medium depth peel. So they may actually tell you, hey, stop the tretinoin about a week before coming in for the chemical peel. Now, if you're somebody whose skin tends to heal with hyperpigmentation, hydroquinone might be prescribed to you to use in advance of the chemical peel. Why? Well, hydroquinone can kind of help uh, quiet down those melanocytes so that they don't rebel against you and make too much pigment um, with, the, with the chemical peel, reducing the risk of post-peel hyperpigmentation. These are some little tweaks that might be made to your skincare routine in advance of a procedure as guided by the treating provider. When you actually go in for the chemical peel, it's kind of pleasant because first they're actually going to wash your face with a mild cleanser. Then they're going to take something like an alcohol pad or acetone, which sounds odd, and rub it all over your face to degrease the skin surface. This way there's no like oily buildup on the skin. There's no cosmetic residue, which by the way, when you go in, don't wear any makeup, um, but they're going to wash your face. They're going to use something like acetone or alcohol to really degrease the skin surface to allow for more 
more even penetration of the ingredient. One thing we want to do is protect certain vulnerable areas from the peeling ingredients. And to do that, you just take a little bit of petrolatum and apply it to the eyelids, around the nostrils, um, as well as the nasolabial folds and the corners of the mouth. And you don't want those the peeling ingredients to collect in these little crevices because it can be too irritating there. So a little petrolatum is put to those areas first, similar to how I suggest you guys do uh, to protect your eyelids from like uh, an, an at-home exfoliant. Same thing, same thing. Uh, and then, you know, depending on the viscosity, the texture of the peeling uh, agent, they're going to apply it to your, to your face with either a cotton swab or a stick, and usually to the thicker areas of the face first, the cheeks, the forehead, they're gonna apply it in an upward motion. Once the desired depth is achieved, then the peeling agent is neutralized with something like dilute sodium bicarbonate. What are the adverse effects of getting a chemical peel? Immediate adverse effects, which are typically pretty mild, include burning, stinging, itch, redness. Sometimes it can cause some swelling and blistering. These minor adverse effects typically resolve within a few hours of the procedure. Rarely in the following weeks, you might have a little acne flare. Uh, you know, this shouldn't happen, but it, there's a possibility for infection. Of course, that's a possibility with any procedure. Persistent Consistent redness, pigmentary changes, even rarer would be an allergic reaction to an ingredient. Uh, God forbid it got towards your, the ingredients got towards your eyes that could damage the cornea, but that certainly shouldn't happen. They should be very careful and cautious. And of course, you know, there's obviously a risk of scarring, especially with the deeper peels. So chemical peels, they are safe, they are effective. Um, and superficial peels, you know, minimal downtime can be really effective. When it comes to the medium and deep, deep peels, you know, more caution is needed. There are more potential risks of side effects and not everyone's gonna be an appropriate candidate for that. Now, after you get the peel done, your skin, you know, it's gonna be a lot more vulnerable. Sun protection is essential. Not the time to go experimenting with a bunch of new skincare products during this period. Your skin's just gonna be a lot more vulnerable to irritation. And of course, depending on the depth, some things are gonna be off limits. Uh, you definitely will want to lean into moisturizers and again sunscreen if I didn't already mention that no picking at the peeling stuff that can be really tempting um, now on the end slate I'm actually gonna link a video where I give a deep dive into how to get the best results from your chemical peel and I go over a lot of this post peel care in that video so check that one out next but if y'all like this give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.